Hello everyone, this is Anson from AnsonAlex.com and welcome to my 2014 Google Drive quick tutorial. This is going to be one video where I talk about all of the necessary features of Google Drive that you need to get up and running and start using Google Drive. Following this video, I'm going to be producing a video series that's going to talk about every feature of Google Drive in detail. So for those of you who like to know every little aspect about the system, also stay tuned for that video series as well. So let's go ahead and get started with this tutorial. I'm going to move over here to Google Drive. You can access Google Drive by going to drive.google.com. You do need a Google account to use Google Drive. So when you go to drive.google.com, this is the page you'll see if you're not logged into your Google account. If you don't have a Google account, you can create one by clicking on the blue create an account link at the bottom. Go ahead and create your account and then come back here to drive.google.com. You might want to pause the video in the meantime. If you do have a Google account, you can go ahead and log right into that account as I'm going to do here. And when you go into Google Drive, if you haven't used it yet, this is what your screen is going to look like. Now, when I talk about using Google Drive, I like to start with some features that are familiar to most people. So before we talk about organizing documents, sharing documents, exporting documents, let's go ahead and let's just create some documents. Google Drive is a service that lets you store and create files in the cloud. And by the cloud, what we mean is those files are stored on Google's servers somewhere in the world, and you can access those files from any computer that has internet access. So you don't always have to bring your computer computer around with you. You can go to a public library, access all of your files with your Google account, and you don't have to worry about what happens if your computer dies because all of your files are going to be saved on Google servers. If your computer dies, you can go on your friend's computer and access all of your files. So it's got some really, really cool features. Now to create a document in Google Drive, we just need to click on the big red create button at the top left of our screen. From here, you'll notice that we have a number of different options. We can create a folder, which we're going to talk about later, but we can also create a document, which is equivalent to a Microsoft Word document. We can create a presentation, which is equivalent to a Microsoft PowerPoint document. We can create a spreadsheet, which is equivalent to Microsoft Excel. We can also create a form, which is good for questionnaires, when we're doing surveys, that sort of thing. Or we can create a drawing, which is good for diagrams and charts that you may need to draw. So let's go ahead and let's get started with a basic document. When we click on create a document, you'll notice that a new tab opens up and we now have a window that looks like creating a document in Microsoft Word. Now the first thing that we want to do in Google Drive is we want to name our document because as we use Google Drive, our documents are saved automatically. So if we don't name them from the beginning, it's going to be hard for us to tell which document is which. So to name our document, we're going to click in the box at the top left of our screen that says Untitled Document. We can click in there and we'll go ahead and we'll call this whatever we want. We can call this Shopping List. And I'm just going to click OK. Now I'm not going to go into details in this video of actually composing a document because I think most of you will be familiar with what you see on the screen here. You can change your font, you can change your font size, bold, italics, underline, you can change your alignments, and you can do numbered lists, bulleted lists, all the same type of stuff that you can do in Microsoft Word. They might be located in some different places, but it's all there. So definitely play around with that and stay tuned for my video series where I'll go into composing documents in detail. For now, let's go ahead and let's just create a bulleted list and we're going to add some grocery items. Here we go. We've got, what, six items there? That should be enough for now. So we've created this document, we've given it a name called shopping list, and we've added some content to it. Now. Because Google Drive saves automatically as we work, we don't have to do anything when we're done working with this document. We can just close the tab. I know it's kind of scary, right? But it's okay because it's saved. So you'll notice that when we close that tab, we go back to the Google Drive tab. And now in our list here, we have a document that's called Shopping List. If we had created a spreadsheet, we, it would also be showing up in our list here, but we'd have the little green icon instead of the blue document icon. Notice that by default, when we're in Google Drive, we're in the My Drive section, which we can tell on the left side of our screen because it's highlighted in red. For instance, if I clicked on Recent, that would be highlighted in red. So we were in, be in the Recent area. So in the My Drive area, you're going to have a list of all of your documents and who the owner is and when they were created. These are going to be documents that were created by you. I'm just going to create another quick document here. So we have two documents to work with, and we'll just call this financial spreadsheet. And I'm just going to put some numbers in here. It doesn't matter. It's just for this test. So we've got some numbers. I'm going to go ahead and close it out here. And you'll notice I might have to refresh my page or just wait for Google itself to refresh. But once Google refreshes, we'll refresh the page. We have our financial spreadsheet is now in the My Drive list. Notice over here, 
we are currently sorted by title because the title column on the left side of our screen is highlighted in red. Alternatively, we could click on any of these columns, such as title, owner, or last modified, to sort by that column. I personally like to sort by last modified because I like to see the documents that I've used most recently. Now at the same time, as this list builds here in Google Drive, you might have 100 documents here in my drive. So to see all of the recent ones, you might want to click on this recent section and it'll show you all of the recent documents. Notice that you can also sort by owner. So in Google Drive, we can share documents. And if somebody shares a document with us and gives us edit permissions, we can actually make changes to that document. They can make changes to it. And actually, if they're making changes to it and we're looking at it, we will see the changes as they type their words. It's really, really cool. So you might at some point get some documents in here that aren't owned by you, but are owned by somebody else. Now, when somebody shares a document with you, you should get an email notifying you, and then you can open up that document. But by default, it doesn't come right into the My Drive section because somebody could spam a bunch of documents. They could just share documents with you even though you don't want them. So what Google does is it sends it to this section on the left-hand side that's labeled Shared With Me. And I actually shared a document with myself for this tutorial. So you can see when I go into Shared With Me, I have this document that says Ants and Alex Shared Test. Now, I can always access this document by going to Shared With Me, but if I wanted this document to show up in my My Drive section, I can do that as well. All I have to do is click and drag this document into My Drive, and you'll notice there it is. I now have Ants and Alex Shared Test is showing up in the My Drive section. And if we sort this by Last Modified, there we go, we'll now see that our, because last modified is highlighted in red, we can see that we are viewing our documents in order of last modified. Now at the same time, we may also wanna create folders here in Google Drive. So we can click on the big red create button in the top left side, click on create folder, and we can call this folder whatever we want. We'll call it personal documents. And go ahead and click create. You'll notice that when we do that, it's going to show up underneath this My Drive section. Now you may have to click the little arrow to the left of My Drive to get that, those folders to pop down. But once we have a folder there, we can actually then drag documents out of My Drive and into the folders in My Drive. So now I click on Personal Documents and you'll see there's my shopping list. If I click back on My Drive, it's not there anymore because I actually moved it into a folder. But you'll see that the Personal Documents folder is now showing up. If I go to Recent, however, my shopping list is still there because Recent doesn't care where these documents are. They are just going to show you the most recent documents that you've worked on. Looking at this list, we can see that the shopping list document is in Personal Documents. That's what it tells you over here to the right of the document, tells you where it is. Now, there's also another feature here in Google Drive if we go back to the My Drive section, you'll notice that you have this little I button at the top right. This allows you to see some details and activity for particular documents. So if I click on the financial spreadsheet document, with my activity window open, it'll tell me you know, when it was created, if any changes were made to it, that's in the activity section. And then if I go to details, it'll show me who the owner is, what the visibility is, if it's shared with anybody. I can see what folder it's in and just some other info here. So you might want to keep an eye on this section as well. If you just click on My Drive and you don't select any documents, this activity section is going to tell you all of the activity that's happened within My Drive. So if somebody else has modified a document, if you've modified a document, if you've created a document, all the stuff that's going on within Google Drive. If you don't want to see this activity section, you can just click on the I again. As you're working with documents here in Google Drive, the best way to perform an action on a document is to right click on it. So if I right click on this Ants and Alex shared test document, you'll notice that a number of options appear. I can open this document, which I can also do just by clicking right on the name of the document as it opens in a new tab. Let's go back to our right click menu here. I could share this document, which we're gonna talk about in a second, so hold on to that thought. But notice down here at the bottom, I can also delete the document by clicking remove. That would send it to my trash. Items in the trash will be permanently deleted after 30 days, so keep that in mind. I could also download this document. And here's the cool thing. I could download this document into a format that other people can use. So I can create a document here in Google Drive. It can just be a Google Drive document, but then if I wanna send it to somebody or I just wanna put it on a flash drive, I can download it in Microsoft Word format, I can download it in PDF format, as well as a few other formats, but those are probably the two that you'd be most likely to download the document as. Now, let's say we wanna share this document because I know that's probably what a lot of you are wondering is how do I share these documents with people who don't use Google Drive? So let's go ahead and right click on this document again. 
you'll notice that we have this section that's called share. And in here we have a few different options. The first option is just called share again. And I'm begging Google to change the label of these two lists here because it's kind of repetitive. But this first share right here is to share it with somebody else who uses Google Drive. So if I click on share, this box will come up and I can go ahead and I can share this document with somebody else. So I could share it with webmaster at ansonalex.com. When I share it with that person, I can choose whether that person can edit the document, just comment on the document without actually changing the body of the document or just view the document. So they'd be able to see everything within the document, but they wouldn't be able to make changes. So that's obviously going to depend on the situation, but if you don't want the person to make changes to the document, just give them view permissions. I can also add a little message to the email that this person receives when the document has been shared with them, and then I can send it. Now, when I send this document, that person's gonna get an email saying, Anson shared a document with you, click here to open it up. But if they also go to the shared with me section of Google Drive, they will see the document that I shared with them. They'll be able to view it or edit it depending on the permissions that you gave them. If they can edit it, they can open it up, start editing, and as they type, you will see those changes. It's really, really cool. Let's go back here to my drive, and let's take a look at how we would share it with people who don't use Google Drive. So we right click on the document, we go to share, and then this time, instead of clicking share again, we're going to click email as attachment. From here, I can send this to whoever I want. Actually, I'll just send it to myself so you guys can see this. I can go ahead and create a subject for the email, a message, and then up here at the top, I can choose the format. You'll notice because this is a spreadsheet, we have the options of doing an Excel file, an open office spreadsheet, or a PDF. Generally, you're probably going to use Microsoft Excel. You might do PDF sometimes. If we were to email a document that's not a Google spreadsheet, we could go to share, email as attachment, and you'll notice our options are a little different. We have a few more options, but one of them is Microsoft Word. So when you email somebody this document, it's going to send it to them as an attachment, as a regular doc. So I'll send this to ansonalex2014 at gmail.com, and we'll go ahead and just send it. And then I'm gonna open up a new tab here real quick, check my email. You'll notice in my email, I have this email that says Anson Alex has shared a document with you. And I can see because of the paperclip that there's an attachment. I'm gonna close this out. And you'll notice down here at the bottom, I have this docx document that I could download to my computer. Now at the same time, let's say somebody else sends a document to you in Word format. So we can use this as an example. Somebody sent this Word document to me, I wanna open up in Google Drive. Instead of clicking the download button, I'm going to click the save to drive button. When I do that, it asks me, hey, where do you wanna save it? And I'll go ahead and I'll say in personal documents and I'll click move. Now if I go back to Google Drive, it's gonna look the same I'm actually sharing a document with myself that I've already created, so I'm gonna have a duplicate now, but generally speaking, if somebody's sending you an attached document, you don't yet have that document. But if I go into personal documents, you'll see I now have a Microsoft Word file. This file is still in Microsoft Word format, so if I click on it, I can't actually edit it yet. I can only view this file as a preview, which should load up here in a second. Actually, I don't, there's nothing on this file now that I remember because I didn't add any text to it. But if there was text in here, you would see the content of the file. Now, if I wanted to open this file as a Google Drive file, if I wanted to convert it so I could edit it, I can actually click out of this preview and then right click on the Word file, which we can tell by the big blue W. And when I right click, I can go to the Open With menu. And now I can choose Google Docs. It's gonna open up a new tab, it's gonna convert this document, and now I could go ahead and edit it. So let's look at that one more time. I'm gonna do the Excel file now because I actually have some numbers in there. So we're gonna go ahead, we're gonna right click on the Excel file, we're gonna email it as an attachment. I'm going to send it to myself, ansonalex2014 at gmail.com. You'll notice it's an Excel format. Here is the file. We'll go ahead and send this email. Go back to my Gmail. And here's the email I just sent with the attachment. We'll click on that. I'm going to click on the Save to Drive button, which allows me to save it in my, say, personal documents. I can go back to Drive, and you'll notice I have, an, I have the same spreadsheet, but this one's in Excel format, which I can tell by the symbol. So now I can right click. First of all, if I click on this to view it, you'll notice we can see the numbers. Like I said, they would be there. But now I can right click on this document, go to Open With, choose Google Sheets. It's gonna open up in a new tab. It's gonna convert my document Sometimes it takes longer than other times, depending on the size of the document. 
And you'll notice here is my spreadsheet. It's now editable. It's been converted from Google Drive format to Excel format and then back to Google Drive. Now for the most part, Google does a very good job of converting files both to Google Drive format and to Microsoft Office format. Depending on some of the formatting, there might be some subtle changes that you may see, but for the most part, they convert very well. The last thing that I'd quickly like to show you is how you can also upload files into Google Drive. So we talked about getting files that have been emailed to you into Google Drive, but what about a file that's sitting on your desktop? And remember, Google Drive is a file storage utility. You're not limited to Word documents, Excel documents, PDFs. You can upload applications, .exe files, Files. You can upload images, videos, whatever you want. So let's say we wanted to upload a file here to Google Drive. What we can do is we can click on the red button to the right of create that looks like an upward pointing arrow. And from here, we can choose whether we want to upload a file or an entire folder. So we could upload a whole folder at once if we wanted to. If we click on files, I actually have a screenshot on my desktop that I want to upload. So you can see my finder window pops up. I'm on my desktop and I just have this screenshot. It's a PNG file, it's an image. I can go ahead and click open going to upload that file, as you can see down here in the bottom right, to my Google Drive. It's finishing up now. And once it finishes, it appears in my Google Drive list, and I could go ahead and I could click on it to open it up and view that image. So remember, you're not limited to regular documents here in Google Drive. You can upload anything you want. So I'm going to close out of that, and I actually don't want that in my Google Drive. I'm just going to remove that. So. That's pretty much all I have for you for this initial tutorial of Google Drive. You should now know how to create folders, organize your documents, create documents, share those documents with other Google Drive users or with people that use Microsoft Office, Microsoft Excel, Microsoft Word, and also how to take documents that you've received via email and open them up here in Google Drive. So stay tuned for the 20 part video series on Google Drive that I have coming up that's going to talk about every feature in detail. If you enjoyed this video, I'd really appreciate a thumbs up here on YouTube. If you wanna see more technology tips and tutorials, especially Google Drive tutorials, remember to subscribe to my YouTube channel and to head on over to AnsonAlex.com and sign up for my weekly newsletter. And stay tuned for my 20 video series on Google Drive coming up here in the near future. We'll see you guys soon.